this is Perry bringing you another reading lesson. So come on in and let's take a look at what you'll be learning today. Today, you'll learn how to determine the central idea of a story. If you remember last week's episode, you learn how to determine the key details of a story. In more simpler terms, you learn how to determine the important information in a story. This week is a little different. Instead of looking for the important information or key details, we are going to learn how to determine the central idea of a story. The central idea is the big point or the most important point the author is trying to get you to understand. Typically, in order to find the central idea of a story, basically, I like to ask myself and my students, what big thing or idea does the author want to tell or teach me? The central idea is the main focus or big idea of the story. Okay, let's practice. I'll read a short passage, then we'll work together to determine the central idea or the big idea the author was trying to tell us. Okay, let's get started. At the playground. A playground is near my house. The playground is where I play. At the playground, I look up. I look up at the sky. I look up at the clouds. At the playground, I slide. I slide down the slide. I slide down to the ground. At the playground, I run. I run on the ground. I run on the grass. I like to play at the playground. All right, let's talk about that passage. Now, as we work to determine the central idea, keep in mind that we have to figure it out by asking ourselves questions about what we read, okay? Now, we know the passage was about being where? Correct, at the playground. Now, I want you to take a second and think about what the author wanted you to know about the playground. And as you're thinking, I'll put a few choices on the screen for you to choose from. If our short passage was about being at the playground, do you think the author wants you to know all the things we can do for fun once we get home? Does the author want us to know some things we can do at the playground? Or does the author want us to know a few things we can do after we've done our homework? If you said the author wants us to know some things we can do at the playground, then you are correct. Yes, the entire passage was about being at the playground and our character told us a lot of things she liked to do while she's there. Guess what? You just determined the central idea of the passage. It wasn't too hard, was it? Remember, the central idea is the big point the author wants you to understand. And knowing things to do while at the playground is what the author was trying to teach us in this passage. Now, can you recall some activities the little girl likes to do while at the playground? Just yell them out right now. I hope you said run on the grass, slide down the slide, or look up at the clouds. Okay, let's recap today's lesson. So, you learned how to determine the central idea of a story or passage after reading. You also learned the definition of the central idea, which is the big point or the most important thing the author is trying to teach you or get you to understand. 
We also work on our recall skills. You didn't even realize I threw that in there, did you? Well, you guys, I think we can call it a day. Lock all this wonderful information in and I will see you again. But don't move a muscle. Stay tuned for math with Miss Barnes. Good morning, mathematicians, and welcome to class today. I'm Miss Barnes, and this lesson is designed with students in pre-K and kindergarten in mind. Friends, today is a very exciting day. This is the first time we're going to work with numbers that are bigger than 10. That means we won't be able to count them on our fingers. We'll have to use our toes, too. So today we are going to be working on the numbers 11 and 12. And as we work on those numbers, you're going to need a notebook, a piece of paper, something to write on, and a marker, a pencil, a crayon, something to write with. So take a couple seconds now, pause this video if you need to, go grab your materials, and let's get ready to learn. Friends, I have a problem. Look at the mess on my board. I need to know how many squares I have here. But right now, I can't do anything with them. Can you help me organize them so that I can count and write the number of objects here on my board? You will? Awesome, thanks. So the first thing that we need to do today is we need to count the number of objects on my board. So at the top here, I'm going to write the word count because we are going to practice our counting first. So as I'm counting, what I have to do is take each of my manipulatives and move them. That way I know that I have already counted them. Are you ready to practice with me? I'm gonna put my finger on the first manipulative and move it, and I want you to count with me. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Great job! So now we know I have eleven squares. Thanks for your help. We are going to practice counting those one more time. And this time, I'm going to write the number, the numeral, below the square as we count it. This will be really important later, so make sure you're helping me out here. You ready? Let's count them again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven. Great job, friends. Thanks for helping me count those. But now I need to practice writing the number eleven. So we are going to practice writing eleven in two ways. We are going to write the numeral and we are going to write the number word. Are you ready? So take your pencil, I have my marker. Take your pencil, take your crayon, take your colored pencil, whatever you have, and put it in your hand and get ready to write. We start in the sky with 11 and we go down to the ground, okay? So let's write it here, are you ready? Start at the sky, go down to the ground. That is the number one. Now the number 11 has two ones in it, so let's write another. Start at the sky, go down to the ground, and that's the number 11. Great job. Now let's practice writing the word 11. It's a little bit longer than some of the other number names we have. It starts with an E. L, E, V, E, N, 11. If you know how to write your E's, this is a great word to practice writing. E-L-E-V-E-N, 11. Good job. Now the last thing we're going to practice today is modeling the number 11. 
So when we work on modeling the number 11, we're going to use two methods, a 10 frame and a number bond. So when we're using a 10 frame, we know that we are going to need two because a full 10 frame equals how many? That's right, 10. So we know 11 is more than 10. So we're going to make two 10 frames. All done. So I know my 10 frames aren't very even, that's because I'm drawing them by hand. You may still have your 10 frame at home that we made a couple weeks ago, and if you do, great, use that. Mine are a little even, uneven because I drew them. So when we talk about a 10 frame, we are going to move our squares from the top of our board into our 10 frame so that we can talk about how many we have, okay? So I'm gonna do that now. There, all done. Now let's talk about how many we have. So I know that 11 is the same as 10. That's how many we have here. So this is 10 ones. And then how many leftovers do I have? Do you see some extra? That's right. We know that 11 is 10 ones and one one. So 11 is the same as one 10 and one one, or 10 ones and one one. Great job. Take a moment now to erase and reorganize your space, and we're going to work on the number 12. All right, friends, are you ready for our next mystery number? I have a new set of manipulatives on my board that need to be organized and counted. Can you help me? Great. So the first thing we're going to do is count. I'm going to use my finger to move the squares and you are going to count with me. Are you ready? Let's get started. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Great job. There are 12 squares on my board. Now we're going to practice counting them again, and I'm going to write the numerals as we do. Are you ready? Count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. But how do I write the number 12? Can you help me? Let's practice. How do we write the number 12? I'll put a blank here because we'll come back and fill that in. Now let's think about this. When I wrote the number 11, I had one one next to another one. This is the number 11. How do I write the number 12? If you said a one and a two, you're correct. Great job. So we are gonna practice writing the number 12 right here. The number one we know starts in the sky and goes to the ground in a straight line. Ready? One, that's the number one. Now the number two is a little harder. It has a curvy top, slants diagonal, then has a straight line. That's the number two. This, together, is the numeral 12. Great job. Now let's write the word. T, W, E, L, V, E. 12. Great job. Thanks for your help there. Now I can go back to my counting sequence on the top and I can fill in the number 12 because I know that the number 12 is one one next to a two because I have 12. The last thing we're gonna do is model the number and talk about how many we have. So draw your 10 frames or grab the 10 frame that you've been using and let's reorganize our counters. Perfect. 
all set. Now my question for you is how many do we have? I have two groups, two 10 frames. One full 10 frame is how many? If you said 10 ones, you're correct. If you also said one 10, you're correct. Great job. Now, how many leftovers do we have? Let's count them. One, two. I have two ones left over. So I know that 12 is the same as 10 ones and two ones, or the same as 10, one 10 and two ones. Great job on your math today, friends. My challenge to you is to take 11 and 12 and work on finding missing parts. If you have four, how many more do you need to get to 11? If you have six, how many more do you need to get to 12? Remember we practiced this last week when we were finding missing parts of 10. It's been my pleasure to have you in class today. Get ready for Science with Ms. Schumacher, and I'll see you next week. Hi, junior scientists! How are you? This is Ms. Schumacher, and this is science class for pre-kindergarten and kindergarten, but all are welcome. Today is our very last episode, and we are going to think about where we live, where humans live. Our home, our apartment, our house, where we live is like a bird's nest or the turtle shell. It is part of our habitat, but we need other places than just where we live in order to survive. Part of being a junior scientist is taking care of our environment. Today, we are going to check in with one of my friends, Mrs. Marriott. She works for the Kansas City Water Department. We are going to think about how we can take care of our environment, our world around where we live, right here in Kansas City. Let's go to Brush Creek with Mrs. Marriott to find out what she is doing to take care of water. Hi guys, my name is Kristen Marriott and I work at KC Water. And at KC Water, we do all kinds of things and one of the things we do is take care of the water in our creeks, streams, and rivers like you see here. This is Brush Creek. Brush Creek is in Kansas City, really close to where people live and go to school and libraries and doctor's offices and all of those things. And I'm here at Brush Creek and I have found something that makes me feel really sad today. Let's look at the water that we see here and think about what's in the water that shouldn't be there. I see it all around there. What is that? That's trash. And trash does not belong in our water. We have animals that live in this water. If we're lucky, maybe we will see some birds, some ducks, or some geese. We also have turtles and fish. And we even saw a snake in this water. And they don't like living with all of this icky, icky trash in here. It even stinks a little bit today. And so we want to talk about what we can do different to help this problem. Because who made all of this trash? Let's think. Did the birds make this trash? No. Did the turtles make this trash? No. People made this trash. Humans did this to our water. And that makes me feel really, really sad for the animals that live here and the people who like to walk on the path near the water. And so we're gonna talk about some things we can do that makes this better.
The first thing we can do is to make less trash. So I'm going to show you a couple things today that I like to use instead of making trash. The first one, you might have one of these, is a reusable water bottle. I can use this water bottle over and over and over again. I wash it and reuse it. Then it doesn't become trash. I also like to use these bags. These bags are great for holding my snacks or my sandwiches. And I can wash these bags and use them over and over again. They act just like Ziploc bags. What else can I reuse? Let me see. If I go to the grocery store, I can use one of these bags for my groceries. Instead of a plastic bag that flies in the wind and lands in the water, I can use a reusable bag. If I have to wear a mask, I can use a reusable cloth mask that I wash. Hmm, I have a couple more things. I can use a plastic Tupperware. And this one, this one is new to my family. We didn't use these until really recently. This is a cloth napkin. If you wash your face at dinner, you can just throw the napkin away and that makes more trash. But if you use a cloth napkin, I can wash this and reuse it over and over again. I have lots of things I reuse. I hear those geese and those birds. There we go. We're keeping the water clean for those animals. But sometimes I can't reuse things. So sometimes I like to think about what this symbol means. Recycle. If I can't reuse things, I recycle it. That means they use the material and make new things out of it. I can recycle my soda cans. Should I throw this in the water? No, I'll put it in the recycling bin. I can recycle my cardboard. You can also make fun things out of these and then recycle them when you're all done. My, think about what this is made of. Plastic and all of this stuff that I use when I do my schoolwork. I can recycle the paper. When you buy things at the store, you can look for this symbol on the box. If you see that symbol, that means you can recycle it. And that is good for our environment. But sometimes, guys, we can't recycle things either. Not everything can be recycled. So we can clean up trash. Look at our hillside here. Let's look. I see trash in the grass. Ah, uh, there we go. I see a plastic bag. I see something red. And I see trash in the grass. When it rains, water will run down this hill. And that trash will go straight into the water where our animals live. Now we have a whole bunch of geese in the water over there. Can you guys see those animals? We want the water to be clean for them. So what we can do is if we see trash on the ground, we can clean it up in a safe way. We can pick it up and put it in the trash can. So we need to wear gloves. I put gloves on because this trash is icky and dirty. And I will clean it up and Miss Schumacher is going to help me. And we're going to put the trash into a trash bag. 
and then we will put it in a trash can where it belongs so it doesn't end up in our water. Thank you, Ms. Schumacher. We can even have kids help. And students and children can help too. This is a job even kindergartners can do, is you can pick up trash to keep our water and our earth clean and healthy. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Schumacher, for helping. Now, if the trash is not on the ground, will it go into the water? No. It will go to a landfill and it will be thrown away correctly. Whoa! Thank you, Miss Marriott, for taking time to tell us about how important it is to recycle and ensure that what we use, our trash, does not end up on the ground and then in water but for the plants and animals that live there because they could get hurt. It is our last episode and I want to thank all of our junior scientists that have contributed. What has been your favorite part of learning science? Let's check in with some of our junior scientists to see what they learned and loved about science. So, what's your favorite thing about science? Weather. I like, I like science because I can sneak on fun. That it's cool and that you can do lots of things. Okay. Like, like something mom's done and make an explosion of like gas. Science is about weather and uh, letting stuff go in, in, in yards. And, and letting stuff, and let the sound come out, and letting all stuff go. That concludes our episode of Science for Today. I am Miss Schumacher, and it has been my pleasure teaching you in science class. But your learning is not through. It's time to get active with Coach H. Have a very nice summer. Goodbye. Hi boys and girls, this is Coach H here and I'm super happy that you guys are with me. Now we're going to be doing pre-K pre and kindergarten for physical education. But if you want to join, come on in, we're going to do some exercises, okay? Today we are going to be doing some yoga, so you're going to need a couple things. You're going to want to be in an open space, you're going to actually going to need a water bottle just in case you get thirsty during the exercise that we do with yoga. And if you have something, if you have a yoga mat, that'd be preferable. If you don't, just lay on your carpet or if you have a towel, do it that way as well. And if you have a pillow, grab a pillow, you can honestly sit on it and you can be relaxed during those different moves that we're doing, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. The first things that we're going to be doing today is we're just going to do our stretch like I always like to do. So we're going to make sure that we're going to reach for the sky and touch the ground, okay? So we're going to do five of those. So here we go. So reach for the sky and touching our toes. Very good. Being aware of our body. Nice job. Reach for the sky. Touching our toes. Nice job. Give me three more of those. Reach for the sky. Touch our toes. Reach for the sky again. I believe that was four. Coach H is losing track again. One more time. Reach for the sky. And touch our toes. Very good. All right, make sure we're in athletic stance like this. Any position like this, you gotta make sure your legs are squatting. Put your feet out just a little bit, shoulder length. This is athletic pose right here for any sport. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go like this. We're gonna do some tree trunks right here. We're gonna go side to side. Okay, very good. Make sure we're stretching out our lungs, stretching out our ribs, our core, feeling our body. And honestly, sometimes you might pop your back if you're doing this. So it's nice to just do this real quick. So we're ready for our sports games. Awesome, awesome. All righty. To warm up our body real quick, we're just going to do a light jog. So let's do 20 seconds. So here we go. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. Finish us strong. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 
What if? Boom. Nice job. All righty. So we're going to go ahead and get onto the mat. Last thing I forgot is you have a timer. So on my watch is my timer. I also have my cell phone right here. Have a timer. We're going to be doing little time intervals in between. We're going to just do minutes, okay? If you don't have a timer, I'll let you know. I'm going to set it over here on the side and I'll turn it on and off when we're doing our positions, okay? So the first position I want you guys to do on top of your mat or wherever the case may be, you want to, I have my shoes on. If you want to take off the shoes, just set them on the side like that. And we're going to be doing yoga, okay? Yoga is all about knowing your surroundings and being aware, okay? So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be aware of our body. I always like to do the breathing treatment. This is perfect. Yoga is all about just knowing your body and keeping that position for a long period of time, okay? So you have to be really good about sucking in here, just like this. One, two, three. And holding it and then breathing out. One, two, three. Okay, so one way that we're going to do this, the first position I want you guys to do is just like we were doing the toe touches. What I want you guys to do is I want you to go as far back as possible like this. You're going to go like this, reach for this guy, and I want you to reach back like this, and you're going to then, when you're going down, exhale. So we're going to inhale real quick, so here we go. Inhale, one, two, three, hold it, and then exhale, and now we're going to touch our toes. One, two, three. And just let your arms drag down to the tree. If you're like a willow tree or something like that, the trees sometimes that the branches go down and just go like that. And touch your toes and say, hello toes. <laughs> Alrighty, nice job. Now we'll go again, we're gonna breathe in. So here we go, breathe in. One, two, three. Reach far back as possible, just like that. And exhale. We're going down and touch our toes. We're going to do one more of those for our minute. So here we go. Breathe in again. One, two, three. Reach back as far as you can. And then we're going to exhale. Going back down. Very, very good. Alrighty, now we're gonna go down to the ground. So I want you to get down to the ground, onto the floor just like this. And one that we're gonna do is called the cow. You're just on your four hands. So if you ever seen a cow in the field, they're like this, they got all fours on the ground like this. My feet are right there, my hands are like that. And what we're gonna do, if you ever seen a cat, a cat goes like this, right? So it goes like that. So you're gonna go like that. And then the other one is you're gonna go down just like that. Okay, and that's, this is called the cow position. So we got the mad cat, and then we got the cow, okay? So when we inhale, we're gonna go like this and go. And then exhale. And you really wanna try to get as low as possible right down through here in the back, okay? You guys ready? So we're gonna do a couple of those, all right? And all about is just relaxing and feeling your, the air coming into your lungs, and then breathing it out, okay? Relaxed position, mindfulness, knowing where everything's at. We're gonna breathe in, it's a mad cat. Just like that, arch your back as much as possible. And then exhale. Just like that. And you're just bringing your head up just like this, arching your back just like that. Very good, all right? Here we go again, breathe in, and you're bringing your head down. Arch on your back as much as possible. Holding that air. And then, here we go. Exhale. Just like that. Very good job. All right? We're gonna do that one one more time. You guys ready? Breathe in. Hold it. And breathe out. Just like that. Very good. All right, the next one that we're gonna do is you're just gonna be bringing it between. And this one's kind of weird. If you can, the most advanced position is you're gonna go like this and you're gonna uh, breathe in here while doing this. And then bring it back down over here and then you're gonna exhale. Okay, and then you're gonna lay on the floor. 
okay? When you lay on the floor, you should have all the air rushing out of your body, okay? So that's a little bit advanced. If you, don't, if you can't put your foot all the way to the other side, you're just gonna be in push-up position, just like that, and you're gonna suck in as much air as you can. Just like that. And then when you go down, you start exhaling. All the way down, just like that. Still in your arms are like here. You might bring them down just like this. And let the gravity, the weight of your body, just let it sink into the floor, like you're part of the floor. All righty, nice job. Just like that, put my toes down flat like that. They don't have to be pointed. If you want to keep them pointed, you can, but just like that. And just let, just be aware of the body, just like that. Very good. All right, we're gonna go ahead and go up again. So here we go, breathe in. Like we're building some muscle in our arms, very good. And then exhale. And we're back down to the floor, very good. Alrighty, one more time, up. Very good, and then exhale. And let all that air out while you're laying down, very, very good. Alrighty, we're gonna get back up, so I want you to go like this, use your arms, face forward just like this, hold the ground right there. Almost like a snail, reaching forward and stretching out that back. And then once you've done that, I want you to go like this and reach forward and you're going to act like you're a cobra snake. Just like that. Very good. Okay, one more time. Down, like you're bowing. And then back up, like a cobra snake. Awesome job. Boys and girls, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. The yoga positions are there for you so that you can relax when you get done with homework, or if you wanna do it before homework so you have a clear mind, totally do that, okay? Make sure you guys are drinking water. I'm gonna get a drink of water real quick. Stay hydrated. It's been a pleasure. Thank you guys so much for joining my video. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. See you guys next time. Hola, hola. You guys know my name by now. Miss Ellis or Senorita Ellis. First, I always like to give a thanks and a shout out to Coach H for such an engaging lesson in PE. I say this all the time. We get our bodies moving, right? So now it's time to get our minds moving in Espanol. Today, we are going to learn about days of the week. Días de la semana. Here we go. So repeat. Lunes. Repite. Lunes. Repite. Lunes. Excelente. Lunes is our wonderful, wonderful Monday. Next, we've got martes. Repite. Martes. Martes. Martes is Tuesday. Repite, miércoles. Repite, miércoles. Una vez más, miércoles. All right, make sure I hear you. Miércoles is Wednesday. Repite, jueves. Jueves. Una vez más, jueves. Thursday. Jueves is Thursday. Repite. Viernes. Viernes. Una vez más. Viernes. Excelente. Viernes is Friday. It's Friday, Friday. You probably don't know that song, but it's okay. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Repite. Sábado. Sábado. Make sure I hear you. Una vez más. Sábado. Awesome. Sábado is Saturday. And as you see, my girl there, she is relaxing because Saturday is a day for relaxation. Yes? All right. And last day of the week. Repite. Domingo. 
Repite, domingo. Una vez más, domingo. Awesome. Domingo is Sunday, okay? Another day of relaxation. As you see my bitmoji there, relaxing. Okay, now that we went through the days of the week, I have a song, okay? You're gonna see the days of the week with different colors on my screen, okay? We are going to sing a song that's gonna help you memorize the days of the week, okay? Here we go, just listen for the first round. Lunes, martes, lunes, martes, miércoles, miércoles. Jueves, viernes, sábado, jueves, viernes, sábado, domingo, domingo. Lunes, martes, lunes, martes, miércoles, miércoles. Jueves, viernes, sábado, jueves, viernes, sábado, domingo, domingo. It might be a little quick. But that is a song that I learned from my Spanish teacher that helped me remember the days of the week. So let's sing it a couple more times and I want you all at home to try to sing along with me, okay? Try your best to keep up. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. Lunes, martes, lunes, martes, miércoles, miércoles. Jueves, viernes, sábado, jueves, viernes, sábado, domingo, domingo. Lunes, martes, lunes, martes, miércoles, miércoles. Jueves, viernes, sábado, jueves, viernes, sábado, domingo, domingo. Awesome job. Un aplauso. So those are your days of the week in Espanol, okay? Before you guys leave today, let's do some practice with the days of the week, okay? So as you'll see on my screen, there's a table and there are some words that are just mixed around, okay? Our job is we need to take the words that are mumbo jumbo at the bottom and we need to match them with the correct day of the week in English, okay? So in our chart, let's start with Monday. Which of my words on the bottom mean Monday? Think of my song. Lunes, martes, lunes, martes, miércoles, miércoles. Jueves, viernes, sábado, jueves, viernes, sábado, domingo, domingo. So if you guess lunes, you are correct. Lunes is in pink and that's what you're gonna place or that's what we're going to place, perdón, under Monday. Awesome, one down, six to go. So Tuesday, which of my words means Tuesday? Think of the song. Lunes, martes, lunes, martes, miércoles, miércoles. Awesome, martes, exactly. And in the beginning of the song, what do I start with? Lunes, martes. This lunes, martes, Monday and Tuesday. All right, let's do Wednesday. Lunes, martes, lunes, martes, miércoles, miércoles. So miércoles is Wednesday, which is our green option. So we're gonna place the green miércoles under Wednesday. You guys are doing awesome. Let's do Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's four more and then we're done. Okay, so Thursday, lunes, martes, lunes, martes, miércoles, miércoles, jueves, viernes, sábado, jueves, viernes, sábado, domingo, domingo. I really hope you guys are picking up on my clues because jueves is what day of the week? Thursday, awesome. So we've got lunes, Monday, Martes, Tuesday, Miércoles, Wednesday, Jueves, Thursday. What is Friday? Which of my options is Friday? Starts with a V, right? Awesome, Viernes, right? So Viernes is gonna go under Friday. Saturday, starts with an S, I'll be nice. 
Sábado, perfecto. I know I heard somebody say sábado. Awesome. So then our only option left is domingo, right? So now that we've got all our options in our table, let's do our song one more time. Lunes, martes, lunes, martes, miércoles, miércoles. Jueves, viernes, sábado, jueves, viernes, sábado, domingo, domingo. Lunes, martes, lunes, martes, miércoles, miércoles. Jueves, viernes, sábado, jueves, viernes, sábado, domingo, domingo. I'm so proud of you. We just learned days of the week. So as always, I usually have an activity for you all to do on your own at home so that you can remember these lessons we go through, okay? So I'm going to have you guys create a caterpillar, a days of the week caterpillar. You heard me correctly. So as you see my insect on the, excuse me, on the screen, parents and guardians, I'm kind of directing my focus towards you a little bit. The link is in that shape that's yellow there. So if you click on that, it should open you up to the correct page. And if you look directly below that yellow shape, that is the place that you will need to push on the website. You will see it because it looks exactly like it is on my screen. You'll hit download and from there you'll have everything you need. Um, you'll have the instructions, everything, so that your student can create a days of the week caterpillar, okay? That is all I have for you guys today with days of the week. Don't forget the song we sang, all right? And I will see you until next time. Adios. We are happy to have you visit our family here at Northeast Middle School. My name is Principal Schriever and I am the principal here at Northeast Middle School. We serve students in the 7th and 8th grade in the historic Northeast neighborhood in Kansas City. Welcome to Northeast Middle, the home of the mighty Titans. Welcome to Northeast Middle. Transitioning to middle school is exciting, but it can also be scary. But that's what we're here for. I teach students success skills, a class where students get in touch with their emotions and learn how to stay on task in their courses. Hello, 
my name is Mir Nalaya. I am the parent liaison at North Smith School. I communicate with parents, legal guardians regarding school information, events, school advisory committee, and more. I love interacting with students' families every day. Hello and welcome. My name is Christine Disming and I teach Geography and Economics here at Northeast Middle School. We have a safe and nurturing environment in our classrooms. Your student will enjoy learning here. Hi, I'm Laura Culp. I'm an eighth grade math teacher. Welcome to eighth grade. We offer advanced courses in all four subjects. Learning here is fun and rigorous because we care about our students and their academic experience. Northeast Middle School students are successful and prepared for high school. AVID, which stands for Advancement via Individual Determination, is a college and career readiness program. Students develop the skills they need to be successful in college starting in middle school. Most students continue their AVID course throughout high school with the same group of peers. Hi, I'm Mr. Fleming and I teach PE and Health at Northeast Middle School and we have a wide range of electives including choir, band, orchestra, visual arts, creative writing, and much more. Hello, my name is Kenneth Moore and I teach 7th, 8th grade choir. Our goal is to ensure our students get the very best academic opportunities. Our students maintain a well-rounded experience. Northeast Middle School is truly a diverse environment. We have scholars from all over the world and we have as many as 30 languages spoken in our building at any given time. To celebrate the diversity in our building, we host an international festival so our scholars can get a true taste of the world. Hi, I'm Ben Jonte. I'm the art teacher at Northeast Middle School. Project Lead the Way, one of our electives, provides our students with hands-on, real-world learning. This will give them experience in growing industries like computer science, design, and robotics. Hello, I'm Ms. Shepard, and I'm the athletic director here at Northeast Middle School. Here at Northeast Middle School, we offer variety sports for boys and girls, including basketball, track and field, soccer, wrestling, swimming, cross country, flag football, cheerleading, and volleyball. Thank you for taking the time to visit with us today here at Northeast Middle School. To learn more about our campus or to request a personal tour, please call 816-418-3400. We look forward to sharing with you more of the exciting things occurring at Northeast Middle School. Hello, we're happy to have you visit Carver. We are a dual language school where our students become truly bilingual and biliterate. Welcome to Carver Dual Language. Bienvenido al primer 
primer grado en Carver. Welcome to first grade in Carver. In kindergarten and first grade, all students learn to read and write in Spanish. Welcome to fourth grade at Carver. In fourth grade, our students have the opportunity to join our robotics team. Our students work together on a community project and learn to code a robot's movement. By sixth grade, Carver students are truly bilingual and biliterate. Students can fluently speak, read, and write in both Spanish and English. Carver students move on to much success in middle school, high school, and beyond. We celebrate Hispanic heritage throughout the year at Carver Dual Language. Each year, students develop a plan to make goods to develop and to sell at our Mercado. This is our annual fall market that classes have booths that students come together and sell their items that they've created. Staff, community members, family, parents, grandparents, all can come together, buy the goods, and celebrate Hispanic heritage together. In Carver, we have an involved PTA where parents and families can be part of our school community. Thank you for joining us on this tour. If you would like to schedule a personal tour or learn more about our school, please call 816-418-4925.